With new building techniques and technologies, it's no surprise that the requirements for building a new home also change. Joining us again is Bill McAnally, who is a building expert. And Bill, through the years, you've probably seen tons of changes in new home construction. What would you say is the biggest change you've seen? We used to think that homes had to leak. Uh, you know, there's that the home has to breathe. Um, we have to make that home as airtight. We're required to make that home as airtight as possible because then we can control, you know, moisture. We can control uh, dust. We can control uh, indoor allergens and so you know with better systems uh, heating and cooling systems and filtration we have a lot better indoor air quality than we used to have. Why don't you walk us through and just show us some of the examples of things that have changed. Okay. Um, one of the things that you know are pretty common in the newer homes is uh, recess lights. Um, the recess lights that, that we have in here are supposed to be uh, rated for insulation contact. They'll say they're IC rated um, so they have to be rated for that and they also have to be airtight. Now it's pretty hard to make something that goes through the ceiling and into the attic airtight. So the only way we can really do it is to either seal around the bottom of it with gasketing or put a box over the top. Um, one of the other things is, uh, you know, maybe when you are interviewing your builder, ask them, can we come over on a real windy day? And it may make him nervous because what you want to do is put your back, your hand over the switches or receptacles on the outside walls. And if you feel any air moving at all on a windy day, then that builder hasn't built to that standard. Good things to look for. Yeah, let's look at some other stuff. Let's go down to the basement and see some other examples. Now that we're down in the basement, let's take a look at, you know, maybe some other things to talk about with your builder or some of the subcontractors. We have a lot of concrete uh, basements. We have a lot of walkout lower levels. and. And one of the things you want to think about is what kind of flooring are we going to have down here? You know, your, your, your options are, you know, ceramic tile, you know, bamboo, carpet. And carpet seems to be kind of the, the go-to product, for, especially for, you know, rooms for kids to come down and play. But one of the problems we found out in the past is that when we put uh, carpet and pad over the top of concrete in a lower level, not the upstairs, but in a lower level, um, we tend to get condensation. And so because the, the carpet acts like an insulator. And so then the, the concrete gets cool, gets some condensation underneath there, and you might have some mold growth and that you know, may create an area where the, you know, some kids really shouldn't even be. So during the construction phase, you wanna make sure that there's one inch, at least one inch of foam underneath the concrete floor. Um, if they're gonna put radiant floor heat, they automatically put the foam underneath it. But if you're not gonna have radiant floor heat, you'll have one inch foam. And so then that's gonna keep this nice and dry down here. Um, the other thing to think about in a walkout is we tend to bring the ground a little bit too close to the walls on the outside of a house. We wanna keep, you know, a slope away. But we should also on a walkout, try to keep that soil and grass, you know, six, eight, 10 inches down from the bottom of your siding. Um, because we don't want the water that's, uh, you know, maybe from, from rains or even, you know, irrigation, getting even close to the house at where the wall and the floor meet because that water can migrate in and then it can climb right inside the walls and you may have some, you know, some mold and moisture issues. So let's go ahead and take a look at the mechanical room and, and take a look at some things in here. So Bill, if I'm planning to build a new house, what are some things that I need to be asking of my builder to make sure he's staying in terms of the, the regulations for a new home? Well, you know, one of the things is, is right here on top of the, the, the panel box, you know, this is your electrical panel that you'd usually see in a mechanical room. There should be a sticker on the outside or right inside the door that will show that the home has been inspected. All that has to be here and it has to be signed off. So, you know, this is one of the first things if you walk into a home and it isn't here, it hasn't met the requirements. So that would kind of make you think, well, if they haven't, you know, passed it on just a sticker, than what other things you know are there. And now under these circumstances, this has not yet passed inspection. Oh no, no, so. we're right in the phase and that's fine. You know, what I look at it really is, the first thing I look at is, hey, I can actually read all this. <laughs> and, and you know, that to me is a really big deal because you move into a home, you know, a lot of, lot of builders will give you a homeowner's manual and it'll explain everything. But let's say you don't have a homeowner's manual and a light goes off this contractor has everything labeled exactly right so that you can come down here and take care of it. And it's a nice quality, clean installation. Now we're looking at the installation and I'm liking what I'm seeing here, Bill, in terms of they've got R value already, where you can see it here. Yeah, that's another requirement is, is you have to be able to, the inspector and you, the owner, should be able to see what type of insulation it is, you know, before it's covered. And it actually has to say the number. This has a, um, you know, an R value printed on the outside 
And one thing you also want to look at is, is it, is it fluffed? Does it fill the whole cavity, especially up in between the floor joists? And that's a really good application for spray foam. And how about down here? Are expanding your eight feet, nine feet, 10 feet? What's it going yeah, forward? Yeah, we're, we're seeing more people go with a nine foot uh, tall basement. Some are even going 10. But going that extra foot may cost you an extra $1,500, $1,700. But what that does is by raising the floor up, now the heating and cooling people and the plumbers have that space to work underneath the floor and then you can put you know, a ceiling below that, you know, your finished ceiling. So then they can run the ductwork the shortest distance instead of cutting your floor up or having to go all these right angles that slows the air and makes the system less efficient. So it's a really good investment uh, because uh, the heating and cooling people can actually get their job done right. Well, Bill, a lot of, a lot of great information as, as we really address, I mean, the home comfort, uh, but back to energy efficiency that you've provided to anyone that's looking at and considering building a new home.